Negative Man Origins Doom Patrol's most tragic character explored. A. G. Wells's Invisible Man was a landmark literary creation, which is evident by the number of times his character has been adapted in mainstream media. You all remember Kevin Bacon's incredible performance in Hollow Man, right? But the mode of entertainment that has adopted this character idea the most, and arguably the best, are comics. Rorschach is a clinic with a savior complex and a backwards idea of mortality. Hush is a brutal blast from the past who managed to solidify himself as a core member of Batman's expansive rogues gallery, but arguably the most essential Invisible Man comic book character to have been created appeared on the pages of the 80th issue of My Greatest Adventure, released all the way back in 1963. Lawrence Trainer was a regular test pilot for the US Air Force, but a freak accident left him irradiated and seemingly possessed by an entirely different sentient entity. In a group of fabulous freaks, Negative Man stuck out like a sore thumb, and if you ask him, that's exactly what he is. So without further delay, why don't we take a look at how he became this way? This is Negative Man's Origins Explored. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Negative Man's Conception and Introduction with the Doom Patrol It's kind of ironic how vague the true origin of the Negative Man is because Doom Patrol is a comic that is mostly known for dealing with a highly nuanced subject matter among the typical Silver Age action-adventure sagas. Arnold Drake was about two-thirds of the way finished with his story for the 80th issue of My Greatest Adventure but needed one more character to make it really click. That's when he bumped into Bob Haney. And the two of them came up with the idea for the negative man. Arnold and Bob's launching point for the character was to send him through a cloud of radioactivity and have it affect him so badly that it forces him to wear bandages all over his body. But the true novelty of the character would be this negative man, a projection that can leave his protagonist's body for around 60 seconds. And don't ask Mr. Drake why that is, trade secrets and all that. But this simple sit-down meeting led to the creation of the character that is currently stealing the hearts of everyone watching the HBO Max Doom Patrol series. Negative Man made his debut in My Greatest Adventure issue number 80 alongside the rest of the Doom Patrol in a bit of a standard team-up scenario but with a big twist. The superheroes of this team were all a bunch of, by conventional standards, freaks. It opens in a conventional city setting with a bit of an unconventional manor sandwiched between two large buildings. It resembles the little house from the Stuart Little movies, but a little grander and far more equipped with secret doors, compartments, rooms and a nerve center to boot. You'll see what we mean in a second. Inside this manor, three silhouetted figures meet a nameless man who has brought them there because they all share a few things in common. They are all quitters, outcasts of society, freaks who have been imbued with peculiar powers and worse than normal living conditions. The three figures understandably start talking back to this eccentric rich man who presumes to know everything about their lives. But then the chief shows them his own handicap and reveals that he does in fact know everything about them. He breaks down Rita Farr's chemical mishap during a film shoot for her and then moves on to the man who was covered in bandages from head to toe. His name was Larry Trainer, and he had a bit of a hot streak in him because he taunted the chief after hearing Rita's story by asking him what made him think they even wanted to be out in the public eye in the first place. The chief responded by giving us a succinct version of Larry's transition from army test pilot to a social outcast. Apparently, while he was out testing the experimental rocket ship K-2F, which was meant to reach the highest possible flight altitude, Larry's craft malfunctioned, and it malfunctioned hard. It took him into the unexplored inner wave belts of Earth's electromagnetic field. He spent hours drifting and soaking it in before the vessel nosedived back into Earth's atmosphere and it was at the very last second that he managed to recover from it and crash landed on a dry lake bed. A rescue craft dispatched from his base soon appeared in the skies above, but Larry noticed that one of its landing wheels was jammed and it would mean disaster for the pilot. His strong desire to help his comrade caused a being of energy to shoot out from his body, who managed to unjam the wheel and allow the pilot to land safely and rescue Larry. The chief speculates that the radiation that seeped into Larry's body due to his aerial detour was the cause of the creation of this negative man. 
Larry pipes up and tells him what he doesn't know is that every time he uses his power, he becomes extremely weak while Negative Man is away and he can only use it for 60 seconds. If, for some reason, Negative Man remains separated from Larry's body beyond that, it could very well kill him. The Chief encourages him to use the limitations to his advantage because 60 seconds for a being like the one inside Larry is more than enough for performing ungodly feats of action. But he isn't entirely convinced. Once Robot Man is done introducing himself, the Chief takes the trio on a tour of the Nerve Center, a facility that acts as a command station, surveillance room, and a research lab all at once. As soon as they arrive, they receive a flash bulletin that a time bomb has been set up on a pier and the bomb squad has proven useless in trying to detect it. The chief has a way to detect it with an invention of his, but he won't reach there in time for obvious reasons. He beseeches Larry to help him out and he somewhat reluctantly agrees. Within 32 seconds, Negative Man is able to reach the pier, locate the bomb and bring it back to the nerve center where the four of them manage to defuse the bomb made entirely out of plastic. Negative Man marvels at Elastigirl's ability to control her body's physiology and the Chief reminds them that Robot Man was willing to sacrifice himself for their sake if it came to that. All of them realize that even though they are outcasts and rejects, together they have the power to do something good and thus the Doom Patrol is formed, which functioned like any other Silver Age superhero team. We can see why many people think the X-Men ripped off Doom Patrol because many of the core elements of the mutant society are present in this story. Outcasts with strange powers shunned by society are brought together by a wheelchair-bound scientist who operates out of a nerve center that could just as easily have been named Cerebro. But Doom Patrol is its own thing, and the very next story in this issue proves that. He is head freak in a circus full of them, Negative Man's origins. The challenge of the Timeless Commander introduced the mainstay of the Doom Patrol, Rogue's Gallery, in General Immortus, the immortal seeker of a solution that can revitalize his body to its peak form. Immortus has spent millennia on Earth and is currently operating as a private elite military group's commander. In this story, the Chief sends out the Doom Patrol to recover something from an alien aircraft, but General Immortus gets there first, and this encounter starts exposing the many limitations of the Negative Man's powers. Immortus is able to basically freeze the entity in place using a special device that almost gets Larry killed. And even with the end man in his body, there is nothing he can do to protect himself to conventional supervillain weaponry like freeze rays and such. The efforts of Rita Farr save end man and robot man and this story plants the seeds of the group's interpersonal relationships. Larry is romantically interested in Rita and it looks like she doesn't know quite what she wants from her life besides saving folks from a terrible fate. Robot Man and End Man develop a playful friendship whereby they both insult each other but also have each other's backs. This is the story where Robot Man calls Negative Man Mr. Mammy Bandages for the first time, thus giving rise to his eventual best friend nickname Mummy Face. To round things out, the Chief acted as the brains and the emotional crux of the entire operation, saving his team from certain doom using only his wits and scientific knowledge. At least, that's how it seems initially. My Greatest Adventure, issue number 83, gives us the first hint that Negative Man may be an entirely separate entity from Larry himself, and it's all thanks to the Chief's insatiable curiosity. In that issue, he wants to test the limits of the powers of each member of the Doom Patrol and see if they cannot break through them. The tests go relatively smoothly for Robot Man and Elastic Girl, but when Negative Man is experimented upon, things go awry. Larry sends out his electrical avatar into the ether, but it gets entangled in a giant cloud of electromagnetic activity from a lab trying to send out signals to Mercury, and End Man goes berserk for the lack of a better term. The Chief has to end up putting Larry in stasis and sending Elastic Girl and Robot Man out with a special containment device made of lead to stop Negative Man's rampage. It wouldn't be until another 25 issues or so we got a proper backstory for the Neg Man. Doom Patrol issue number 106 starts the four-part story, The Private World of Negative Man, told sporadically across the next five issues. And it is a dark and twisted depiction of what social isolation can end up doing to a man. In the first part of the story, we get an extended retelling of the accident that turned Larry Trainer into the freak of nature that he was. 
As an Air Force test pilot, Larry was known to be one of the best aviators on the force overall and was even friendly with the renowned West Coast pilot Hal Jordan. Yes, the very same one you're all thinking of. After his K-2F jet was caught in the field of radiation and his crash landing on Earth, we see the aftermath of his encounter with the pilot he saved. And it is utterly disheartening. For a long time, people had wondered what was under Negative Man's bandages and this issue gave them the answer a transparent skin membrane that was alive with radioactivity. When the rescue pilot saw him, he was scared out of his mind and Larry was transferred to a hospital in a van specifically built to contain radioactivity. His ward in the hospital itself was a lead-lined chamber and looked more like a jail cell than anything else. The doctors tried all they could to reverse his condition but failed at every turn. Larry's mother showed up to visit him but he couldn't bear to see her in his condition. He had already accepted the fact that he would have to live life as an outcast. When the doctor's emotional coercion finally made him acquiesce to see his mother, Larry put up his jacket to the camera as he had a meltdown because of the fact that he simply could not be around people anymore. His radioactive body would poison them and condemn them to a fate far worse than his, so he thought it better to isolate himself. Just when all seemed lost, the eccentric scientist Dr. Niles Calder, who was revealed as the chief in Doom Patrol issue number 88, showed up to gift him his life back. Meeting with a group of doctors who were treating Larry, he gave them his special lead-based bandages, which were capable of withstanding any amount of direct radiation. He requested them to keep his identity a secret, but it baffled the scientists why he would do so, as it did Larry, who had nothing but gratitude for this savior who gave him his life back. Sure, he would be covered in bandages and look like a mummy for the rest of his life, but so what? He could mingle with people without worrying about killing them. That alone was enough, or so he thought. Once Larry went out into society, he realized that he was free, like a circus freak was free, to perform at his master's whip. He was pointed at and called names wherever he went, and not even performing good deeds was getting him anywhere. Larry came across a junkyard where a woman was trapped in the trunk of a car with a time bomb attached to her. The cops were making too slow a job of it. So he used his X-ray ability, gained thanks to his accident, to immediately locate the girl and save the day. He was hoping for her to show at least some human affection towards him for saving her life. But when she saw his glowing, skeletal face, she got even more terrified than before and Larry started feeling like nothing he could do would ever make him fit in again. Searching for normalcy and finding doom instead, Larry joins the Doom Patrol. In issue number 107, Larry had moved in with his mother and she wants it to stay that way. But he is determined to get back into society. He has three job opportunities lined up, but all of them seem like a bust. The first is with a cookie private researcher called Dr. Drew, whom Larry privately calls Dr. Death, thanks to his overtly gothic interior decor. The second is with a group of scientists who want to treat him like a guinea pig and Larry refuses for obvious reasons. The third is his old job as a test pilot and while Larry passes his evaluations, no one wants to work with him anymore because of his radioactive nature, no matter whether it was being contained by special bandages or not. His company tried to give him a special pension, but he rejected it, wanting to make it like a man and returned home only to find out his mother was being evicted because of him. Larry returned to Dr. Death and agreed to be part of his experiments, until he realized that the mad doctor wanted to use Negative Man to destroy the planet. He uses N-Man to destroy Dr. Death's transmitters and manages to escape with his life intact. But this isn't the last time Larry comes across Dr. Death. He meets him again in issue number 109 in the Flight Into Fear story, where he is hired by a man called Harkness to fly on a dangerous mission to close off a volcano. During the preparation for the mission, the mechanic working for Harkness slips a radioactive bomb onto Larry's aircraft, but his years of experience as a pilot allow him to complete his mission successfully. When he returns to Harkness, he unmasks the mechanic Charlie and Dr. Death in disguise, and the latter once again manages to escape. This makes Larry doubt his own capabilities, and he thinks to himself that if he cannot defeat Dr. Death for good at their next meeting, he might as well join him, because where else will a freak as him go. 
the answer presents itself to him in Doom Patrol issue 111, when he meets Dr. Death for the third time and is actually captured by him, this time in a lead chamber that doesn't allow a quantum of light to pass through it. The only reason Laddie survives is because of the arrival of the Chief, who uses a micro laser to help Negative Man break out, put an end to Dr. Death's suicidal scheme for the President and the rest of America's top leaders, and finally bring him to justice. After helping out Larry, the Chief gives him his card and asks him to join him if he wants his life to have meaning, which brings us back to issue number 80 of My Greatest Adventure, where the Doom Patrol debuted in a neat little full circle moment. Throughout his journey to becoming a part of the Doom Patrol, Larry faced intense discrimination from everyone he met, known and unknown, because of what he had become. This left a strong sense of owning his own humanity within his psyche, and when the Doom Patrol became a regular superhero outfit, he would often correct the journalists interviewing him as fabulous freaks into referring to them as human beings instead. His other teammates seemed far more tolerant of this distinction than he was, and we understand why he felt that way. Compared to Cliff and Rita, Larry's freak condition was far worse, and to make things even more depressing, his love for Rita was sabotaged by the world's fifth richest man and self-made superhero Mento, who managed to sweep her off her feet and practically marry his way into Doom Patrol, though he never did officially join it. The OG Doom Patrol squad met their end due to the actions of the Brotherhood of Evil, made up of Doom Patrol rogues gallery stalwarts, Monsieur Mala, Madame Rouge and The Brain. The Brotherhood managed to set up things in such a way that the Doom Patrol was left with a horribly inconvenient choice on their hands. They could either save the lives of the people of Codsville, whose population was 14, or their own by protecting the headquarters. The Doom Patrol chose to go out like heroes and sacrifice themselves, with N-Man never realizing his love for Rita beyond a petty love triangle. The Doom Patrol died in issue 121, or so it was thought, until they resurfaced in Showcase 94, with the revelation that Robot Man was still alive and that the Negative Man had now attached itself to a Russian defector called Valentina Vostok, aka Negative Woman. The first incarnation of Negative Man had a lot of achievements that he could rightfully be proud of, even as a freak, because his unique skill set made him the only character that could pull off what he could do with efficiency. Nowhere is this more evident than in Doom Patrol issue number 98, where he literally stops World War III from happening within 60 seconds, thanks to his ungodly powers. Negative Woman's adventures were far less enthralling, so to speak, so it did not come as a surprise to us that Doom Patrol Volume 2 wasted no time in bringing Larry Trainer and the OG squad back to life once again. What was surprising was the direction it took, because it was much darker than anything Doom Patrol had been so far. Larry Trainer's Return read this and HBO Max's Doom Patrol. Most characters tend to return from the afterlife a little differently in comics, and that was also the case for Larry, whose comeback was so unexpected it created an entirely new conflict within the Doom Patrol. Valentina Vostok had been bonded with a negative spirit for years by the time the new Doom Patrol realized what had happened to the old one. And she wasn't about to give it up, just because its original host had resurfaced. But Larry, who was consistently on the brink of death because of having lost Negative Man, was determined to regain it and went to extreme lengths to do so. He became bitter and would often chastise Valentina for stealing what was rightfully his and did everything he could to convince her to give it up willingly. When that failed, Larry did not hesitate to take the violent option and enlisted Reactron, an obscure Supergirl villain with a radioactive signature, arguably larger than Larry's, to try to regain his N-Man. The plan worked and Larry was reunited with the negative spirit once more, but it was soon violently ripped out of his body once again and reunited with Valentina, rendering Larry near comatose. One good thing did come out of this though, Larry was finally free of his radiation. The negative spirit's departure was complete on this occasion and for the first time in a long time, Larry could finally experience a truly human life again. He was recovering in a hospital when the Alien Alliance attacked Earth and started targeting everyone with a meta gene in their DNA, and sadly, he would not get to see the world post-invasion from his own perspective anymore. 
During the invasion event, the Doom Patrol continuity was reset in a major way by the new writer coming on board and as a consequence, Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol is very different from the 18 issues that came before it in Volume 2. After Negative Woman lost a fight to Gargwex, which also resulted in her losing her negative spirit, it rocked up at Larry's side once again but for the first time showed an actual personality. Calling itself Mercurius, the spirit wanted to re-merge with Larry but that wasn't it. It wanted to become something more, something perfect. So Mercurius decided to include Larry's doctor, Elena Moore, into the equation and transcended to becoming Rebus, an intersex being with near-divine powers. This concept of the divine hermaphrodite originates from the school of alchemy and is thought to be the peak of human existence by adherents of it. Morrison decided to take that idea and run wild with it in his version of Doom Patrol, which is by far the most surrealist edition of the franchise to exist. Rebis was at once all-powerful and useless. They possessed the power of clairvoyance, could phase through objects like they were nothing, bend the rules of space and time to their will, and yet their mind was constantly fragmented into three beings wrestling for control, and even in their more lucid moments, Rebis was more insane than inane. According to Robotman, Larry Trainer's former best friend Rebis chose not to furnish their room at Doom Manor and instead spent the entire time talking to themselves and playing with Russian nesting dolls, which were an allegory for the entity in Morrison's story. Rebis had the power to help cure Crazy Jane's dissociative identity disorder and was the main reason that the Doom Patrol were able to defeat the Scissormen but at the same time was unable to feel the kind of love that its host beings had felt for the people they had met in their lives. Before performing the Enigma Regis, a rebirth ritual essential to their immortal existence, Rebus had intercourse with a transgender prostitute and gave them superpowers, turning them into coagula. Once Rebus did reach the moon, they had a disturbing spiritual communion with themselves that was equal parts erotic, esoteric and unnerving. The result of this ritual was the production of a new egg that would ensure Rebus's continued survival and the prophetic arrival of the candle maker, who nearly managed to mess up reality even worse than the decreator before him. The Doom Patrol was able to defeat the candle maker, but Rebus had decided to live on Danny the Street, who had grown into Danny the World, in order to spare the world the mishaps of her unnatural existence. She was joined by Crazy Jane and it was assumed that this would be the last time one would hear from Larry Trainer. That is, until he inevitably resurfaced, bonded with a negative spirit and without a trace of Elena Moore within him because comics. Towards the end of Morrison's run with Doom Patrol, the original team members learn why Niall Scalder was able to save their lives so quickly after each of them had been brought down seemingly by fate. As it turns out, he had masterminded the whole thing. This leaves Larry with an even worse sense of self-loathing than he had before and he barely manages to help Mento, a romantic rival in a different life, defeat the man he thought was his mentor for so many years. From that point, Doom Patrol had been retconned and reimagined at least thrice over with the recent iteration of Negative Man being an alien entity from the negative space called Keek Bovo who has been coexisting with Larry to live as Negative Man. The two were even summoned to a trial of sorts in the negative space for rogue negative spirits but the most important thing to note here is that HBO Max seems to have combined elements of every iteration of Larry Trainer into their personal characterization of him. In the Doom Patrol TV series, most of the powers demonstrated by Larry are similar to the OG Negative Man, bar the fact that TV Larry can actually go without the spirit for 5 hours, but also different. The TV show takes most of its narrative inspiration from Grant Morrison's run with Doom Patrol, which is why you see many of the twists and turns that take place across the first three seasons and even the fourth one as we are speaking. But in terms of the negative man itself, they chose to give it a personal relationship to Larry, like Kigabovo from the comics, and quite unlike any of the previous incarnations of the character. They also decided to make Larry's character gay and gave him an entire backstory which, for the most part, is absent from the comics. Negative Man isn't called so just because of his physical state, as the negative spirit reveals that it feels tortured by the many negative emotions Larry carries within himself. But after they reconcile their differences and manage to accept each other for what they are, they start having a much easier time cooperating. 
And now that Larry has gone through a pregnancy and bonded with his child to become a new and improved negative man, the character is practically a new one when held up to the original version. But the core emotional concepts that made Arnold Drake's negative man such a compelling character are still there. Larry still struggles with accepting what he is and what he has become, albeit he has been doing so for many years as a 20th century gay man in the TV show, and thus his journey of self-recovery is far more impactful for us, the viewers. His friendship with Rita is a brilliant flipping of the status quo from the first Doom Patrol series and the growth he shows as a person across the series is something we are sure that the OG Larry Trainer would be proud of. I had everything and you fucked it all up! <laughs> Marvelous verdict. Currently, Larry and Keeg are struggling to keep the team and themselves together in the wake of the revolution of the Chief's true nature. And as Dorothy manages to contain the surreal threat of Torminox, only two episodes remain before the fourth season of Doom Patrol comes to its conclusion. And supposedly, the world with it. Larry now knows that his role as a unique existence is precious, following his visit to the Negative Nebula. But will he be able to truly cast aside all the doubts he holds within himself to save the world like the hero he always wanted to be? I guess we are going to have to wait and watch for that one. But for now, we can proudly say that HBO's Negative Man not only preserves the spirit of every incarnation of that character from the comics, but rather enhances it with his human flaws and fallibility. And that is what is making him click. Well, that and Matt Bomer's exceptional acting skills. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> no, no, no.